Okay, now I'm going to show you how to clone the repository where the code is so that you can play with it from your machine. So from the GitHub page, if you go to the green button and click it, you will see that a dialog pop pops up with a URL. You can copy that. And then we're going to paste it into your terminal. And what I'm going to do, instead of putting in my root directory, I want to be a little bit more organized. So I'm going to go to where I normally store my code. Um, I, and I just randomly chose a path that made sense to me. So then I'm going to use the git version control program. And I'm going to use the clone command from git to make a copy locally. So I'm going to paste what I've copied from the browser window, type enter, and it will start downloading into a folder called um, the same as the repository name. So then I will change directory into there. And if I list everything that I see in there, it should be pretty similar to this where I've got folders and also files. So I'm going to use the long format and this is an alias that I have so I actually should type this out for you so that you don't get uh, mixed up. Um, you may or may not have it defined uh, with LL. So um, actually to be technically correct if I use dash L without the A flag It'll be the exact same as LL because my alias is set to ls-l and if you use the flag dash a you'll see the invisible files as well. All right so when I use the long format it looks very much like over here um, minus the git ignore because it is an inv invisible file. What I'm interested in is all the files within the first subfolder so I'm going to change directory into that one and again I will list everything in there just to show you that it matches what I see in the browser. This readme document um, or file, this uh, markdown file, I've put together the steps that you would run from the terminal if you did not use the make file to run um, all the steps all at once. So t let's take a look at the make file because it's basically the same contents. If you know how make files work, you'll know that each of these lines are run, um, the ones right under the hash um, symbol. And so instead of using some sort of script to automate all these steps, we're just going to copy paste each one of these commands and I will explain briefly what each of these commands do. So remember how we had this command to see the version of yak? Well, yak is a program. So if we go look at the manual page for yak, you'll see the program name is yak. And if you want to run it, you would type yak. And then you could put in options, which are flags. And then you put the file name that you're interested in um, inputting into this program. So um, this is using the D flag and then the file calc.y, which is a yak formatted file. So let's list everything in the folder again. And you're going to see that two files got created which are y.tab.c and y.tab.h. So the yak program creates these full, uh, these two files. These are C code, C source code. And then the next command to run is lex space calc.l. Um, whoops, let me copy that and paste it. So before I run it, again, if you look at the manual page for Lex, you'll see now there's options 
um, the flag options listed and then the file. And we're not going to use any of the flags here, but you know how to look it up now. So that's that was the important thing. So lexcalc.l and calc.l is the lex configuration file. And now if we look at everything in the folder again, and I didn't need to put the A flag, so once more. So now you see that lex.yy.c was created um, from that program. And now what we want to do is combine the output from both lex and yak together. From the slides, I sketched out some of the key parts of the process from the tutorial that I got this from. And what I had just shown you on the terminal is that the yak program creates the y.tab.h file. The dash d flag was for the definitions um, to create that file. And then y.tab.c was also created and that is the syntax analyzer parser. The lex program created the lex.yy.c, and so now we want to combine um, the outputs of those using a C code uh, generator thing, so that links it, and that'll create our program. We're not going to name it bas.exe like this picture, but we're instead going to call it calc, so that's what our command is going to look like. So if we go back to the make file or the readme file, you'll see the command there. And what we're doing is linking to using the CC program for C uh, code linker, we're combining y.tab.c. So it's just a syntax, um, syntax analyzer file, and then also the lex.yy.c, which recognizes tokens. And all of that's going to be outputted under the name calc. All right, read that the reason why this error happens is that I need to define something in the yak file. So let's give it a try. Um, yep, okay, so I think that helped a little bit, but instead of worrying about the warnings right now, let's take a look and see if the calc program was created. It was right there. So the way we're going to run it is type something like that, dot, dot slash, to say execute it, we run it. And let's take a look at the tokens. So we can have either characters or we can have numbers. I'm going to have upper and lower case. And let's look at some of the rules. So this is meant to be like just a simple calculator. So say, for instance, if we type maybe addition. So one of the val valid expressions for arithmetic is to operands with an operator in between. So let's try something like that. 1 plus 1. That equals 2. Um, so down here, I guess it um, is able to run the calculation for us. Or actually, here it is. So the expression, so the pipes show the different expressions possible. So you want to look in between the two pipe characters for the block of code and it's saying kind of like a key value pair where if you see this pattern that looks very much like BNF notation then you're going to have this executed. So if we try another symbol such as the minus sign then we should be able to get the um, arithmetic operation with that. So let's try 5 minus 3, and we get 2. Um, so it 
looks like there is a way to create parentheses for attaching nested expressions. So we can try one plus one times three. So in arithmetic, it should be two and then times three equals six. And yes, it does return that. So let's see what happens if we have without the parentheses. And it does still calculate with the correct order of operands. So that's pretty cool. Now if we want to exit this, I'm just going to type Control-C, and I'll exit, and I'll tape back to the command line.